like I, you know, like we have no problem getting on the internet and just like yeah. reading hours of nonsense. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the four hours of reading the depths of the internet, you really don't have a better answer. Than no, that. Better. Four. that's what I hate. Like I'm okay <laughs> with that sometimes, but yeah. for some people, they're like, man, I just want like, just tell me. Well, that's the thing, and that's why I feel like we're just laying it out. You do a quick recap. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Jimmy from MTV Travel Review, and welcome back to Stupid Simple Bike Chat. This is episode two. I'm back with Matt, one of the owners, head mechanic, engineer, all around mountain bike superstar, bootlegger bikes in Jeffersonville, Vermont. Today, we're gonna talk about carbon rims versus aluminum rims. One of the bigger debates in the world is always going to be the wheels that you ride and arguably the most important part of your wheel is going to be your rim choice. So much like we talked about in our bar conversation, carbon bars versus aluminum bars, there are some significant differences but I feel like both can work depending on what you're trying to do. So when it comes to carbon, the first thing that we always discuss of course is weight. I think it's very clear the carbon rims are going to be significantly lighter than aluminum rims. How much lighter are we talking about here? Yeah, I think generally, Jimmy, we're talking about a quarter pound, you know, give or take a bit. And when we talk about those numbers, we're really talking about enduro um, or, or, or trail type mountain bike rims. Like these are, you know, these are both 29er, um, relatively wide rims. They're not a DH rim. Uh, this rim comes in at about 590 grams. I think this rim comes in at about 450. Yeah. So in that equation, about a quarter pound, a little over a quarter pound difference. Uh, from what I understand, the weight matters more in your rims, right? Because it's, it's spinning. You have to make your wheel spin, right? So why is weight such a big deal when it comes to, to rims versus, you know, your weight and your handlebars, which I don't think matters quite as much. Yeah, exactly. You know, when we all talk about the weight of our bikes, we all wish our bikes were lighter because you know, it's, it's less weight that we have to pedal around. But in the grand scheme of things, a, a 30 or 35 pound uh, bike, if we shave a pound off that bike, it's not much difference in the grand scheme of things. But when we shave a half pound or a quarter pound, or a pound off, off of our rotating weight in the wheels mm -hmm. and, and or tires, that's all weight that, that, is, that is noticeable for a couple of reasons. And you know, I think the biggest reason is that's weight that we have to pedal. We are putting power to the pedals with our legs and that's being transferred to the wheel. That is weight that we have to turn. No, yeah. so uphill, downhill, if you're pedaling, you have to make this spin. So if it's lighter, it's easier to spin. It's also turning, right? When you're turning your handlebars, if it's yeah. a lighter wheel, it's, it just makes everything snappier. Makes sense. Snappier, more reactive, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So now, with lighter weight, we know that carbon is technically stronger than aluminum, but obviously durability is, is always what's gonna come up next. Aluminum durability in a rim versus carbon. Carbon's more brittle, right? So I think it's the same thing we talked about in the bars. If you get, if you get damage to this rim, you're likely gonna have a catastrophic failure, right? Yeah, I think the biggest thing around robustness of carbon versus aluminum is I call it the death by a thousand cuts, which is basically, you know, you can ride this aluminum rim for many, many, many months or many years. Um, and every time you touch off on a rock or a root or you come off a big hit, the aluminum rim gets a ding here, gets a ding there, gets a flat there. And that stuff is really hard to true out of a wheel, no matter how good the wheel builder is. 60 rides a year and every time I ride, I touch off on a rock and before you know it, like the rims just damaged to a point where I yeah. can't ride it. You get the wobble rim. Yeah. With carbon, what I typically notice, it is way less frequent for that death by a thousand cuts because carbon is a stronger uh, material. Mm -hmm. So you get those little, little hits here and there that um, don't really have a catastrophic impact to the rim. Mm -hmm. So it stays straight because it is not a malleable material. Yeah. It holds its shape until otherwise and until otherwise is typically a very, very catastrophic failure. Yeah. And that's why I think a lot of people will choose aluminum over carbon rims all day. Because if you're on a big adventure ride 
and you damage an aluminum rim, there's a chance you can fix it, right? You can get out of the woods. If you blow up a carbon rim from what I've seen in videos and stuff, like you're not, there's no rolling out of the woods, you're carrying your bike. So I think that's a big difference. The other thing, and this is different versus handlebars too, is, is the stiffness, right? From what I understand, there's, there's two different kinds. There's the, how easy it is to crush this, and then there's lateral stiffness. So when you're riding a bike and putting forces left and right, it's actually the wheel flexing this way. That's right. I literally went to 29 inch rims because I noticed that these were flexing laterally a ton when I went to that bigger rim, just because I feel like it was a bigger circumference, right? This, I feel like I can go in and, and really hammer corners and this carbon is gonna, gonna hold up, of course, unless I shatter it, but it holds up a lot better both laterally and, and on that vertical plane, right? Yeah, and that's, that's really where the stiffness of carbon comes uh, be, becomes a huge benefit is in wheels and the lateral stiffness, just because it doesn't, um, you know, it takes more force to, to, to deflect that rim than, than aluminum. You know? That being said, engineers are, you know, they're, they're looking at the profile of the rim mm -hmm. and really trying to optimize the wall thickness about this entire profile, which is a double wall, to give us lateral stiffness, but vertical or radial compliance because we still want some give in the rim. Yeah. So you want stiff, but not too stiff. Right. And the cool thing was about this, you explained to me earlier, is that you can actually control the stiffness via spoke tension and stuff too, right? So there's different levels to control that stiffness even more. Yeah, that's, that's another uh, aspect. You can really dial in stiffness around spoke tension. Hey, folks, uh, it's, it's funny you mentioned the carbon, the moldability too, because this is actually Noble's TR37 rim, and they actually have what they call a sine wave design. Yep. Where it, we'll show you a clip here, but it actually, the rim has these waves to it that they say makes it even stronger, which is really cool because you, you just can't do that with aluminum, right? Note on the Noble rims is the actual shape of the rim. So they use what they call a sine wave design, which means that there's actually this waves in the side of the rim that you can see if you look very closely. And what that does, or what they say it does, is increases the lateral or side-to-side -side stiffness of the rim. They also so yeah, moving on from stiffness, I think the last thing, and, and we talked about this, the handlebars too, is, is the dampening, right? So from what I understand, aluminum, again, if you swing an aluminum baseball bat and hit something really hard, you feel that reverberation that just makes your hand want to fall off. Carbon has the opposite effect, where carbon actually has its own dampening abilities and, and it basically diverts that energy, right? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, aluminum is a resonant material and it will reverberate vibrations versus dissipate those vibrations. And that's just another, um, you know, benefit. great, as yeah, great yeah. aspect to why am I willing to spend more for carbon parts? Yeah, by perfect segue, because I think that the big factor with carbon versus aluminum rims is cost, right? I mean, from what I've seen, a standard aluminum wheel set with hubs and spokes and everything ready to go is like $500 to $1,000. Carbon wheels, 1,500 to three grand, depending on how fancy you want to get, right? Yeah. And that's just, you know, carbon. The, 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 the material itself, the way you have to mold it, it takes that little bit of extra effort. And, you know, that leads to, I guess, the, the, the recap, the final question, like why one versus the other? So we have, you know, a few different things where these are more, aluminum rims are more durable, right? They're for the everyday rider, I feel like aluminum is totally fine. It might be slightly heavier, but unless you're racing or have some other reason you need a super light wheel, I think it works well. I think carbon, I mean, if, you, if you're stepping your game up and, and have the budget, I mean, I think there's a ton of benefits to carbon, right? It's, it's a little stiffer, it has that dampening aspect. I mean, there's just a lot of good things about it. There are. And then the one negative where it's not quite as durable. So if you break this, you know, you kind of just have to buy a new rim. There's no like yeah. bending it back. Yeah. So we'll get into the, what do you run? So I, I run carbon. So here, I got this for you. So <laughs> this is my wheel off my bike. So I run Noble's TR37. So I've been working with them for a couple of years, really solid rims. I've been running these rims for a year and a half and they're bulletproof. Um, that said, there's also another piece to this where I work with Cushcore as well. And that's one of the things where they have the rim liners as well, these foam liners that can really help you get more durability and even more dampening out of your wheels. It's literally like riding on clouds. But yeah, I've been a carbon guy for a long time. I've never had a catastrophic failure. Uh, I think these rims are gorgeous in the sine wave design and what Noble's been doing, but I think I'm carbon. I think I'm staying carbon. 
Do you, are you carbon or aluminum? I'm with you. I, I rode aluminum rims for many years, um, built by myself and love them. And once I switched to carbon a few years ago, I really haven't gone back. So with every wheel I build for myself, um, I really don't even consider aluminum. Yeah. Um, now, Grant, I'm a bike shop owner, so that that's, that's an aspect, but <laughs> he's got perks. When we talk about ride, just ride quality, um, it's it's noticeable for me, and it's, yeah. it's a huge advantage whether I'm riding, you know, a 29 inch enduro wheel or uh, a 650B or 700C gravel wheel. Um, carbon carbon for yeah. me is I've never failed a carbon rim. I, yeah, I ride hard and I love it. It's been great. I went from you know five aluminum rims a year being replaced to one carbon set per year and a half. So. I'm gonna stick with carbon. Thank you guys for tuning in for episode two of Stupid Simple Bike Chat. We hope this was helpful for you guys. Again, if you have any comments, if you wanna tell us we're idiots, we don't know what we're doing, put it in the comments. If you have a subject that you want us to talk about moving forward, we're gonna keep banging these videos out, so we'd love any ideas on stuff you want us to chat about. Thanks for following along. Keep riding. Yoop.